Hello and welcome to this edition of Linux How-Tos. This week we will be discussing how to secure sensitive data using PGP, specifically the GNU project's implementation of the open PGP standard, known as GPG. Most people use encryption at least some of the time. Perhaps you have a wireless access point secured with WPA or WEP, and the purchases or bank transactions you make online are almost assuredly secured using SSL. PGP and its free software implementation GPG allow you to encrypt any data you choose using one of the strongest encryption methods currently available. Perhaps you've added a password to a zip file or an office document. You should know that these encryption methods are very weak and easily crackable using conventional digital cryptanalytical methods. PGP, on the other hand, employs very strong encryption. Phil Zimmerman, the creator of PGP, selected the most powerful and stable algorithms to use in PGP, and these algorithms have stood up to many years of careful scrutiny by the best minds in the business. This is not to say that PGP, or any encryption mechanism, is perfect, and I will try to point out some of the potential pitfalls in the process of encryption and distribution of sensitive data. However, if you are smart about how you use PGP, you can be assured that your data is very safe. If all of the world's computers simultaneously began an attack on PGP, it is estimated that it would take them more time to crack PGP than there is time left in this universe. Encryption is the process of obfuscating data so that only people who either understand the algorithm or know a slice of data known as a key can decrypt the data. Hiding the algorithm is an example of security through obscurity and is not as secure as using a strong, well-tested algorithm and only hiding the key. PGP is an example of encryption where the algorithm is known, but it is very strong and only the key needs to be hidden. There are two ways the data can be encrypted. With a symmetrical key, where the same key is used to encrypt and decrypt the data, and with public key encryption, where a different key is used to encrypt and decrypt the data. These two types of encryption use different algorithms, and each has its own strengths and weaknesses. Symmetrical key encryption is simple and fast, but there is an added danger in key distribution. It is dangerous to send the key to people who need it because if the key is intercepted, the data is vulnerable and no longer secure. Public key encryption is more complex and about a thousand times slower than symmetrical encryption, but it has the benefit that a different key is used to encrypt and decrypt the data. Here's how it works. First, a key pair is created, containing a private key and a public key. The public key is primarily for encryption, and the private key is primarily for decryption. The keys are mathematically related, but only through a very complex algorithm that is strong enough to make it infeasible to deduce one from the other. Because only the private key can decrypt data encrypted with the public key, it is safe to distribute the public key freely. This solves the problem of key distribution associated with symmetrical key encryption. Once the data has been encrypted with the public key, only the person with the private key can decrypt the data. In addition, the private key is password protected, so if you have a strong password, your data will be safe, even if your private key is compromised. PGP uses a clever mix of symmetrical and public key encryption, taking advantage of the strengths of each. Data encrypted with PGP is first compressed, and then encrypted with a random symmetrical key known as a session key. This encryption is strong and fast. The session key is then encrypted with the recipient's public key, so that the session key is not known unless it is decrypted with the recipient's private key. This makes key distribution easy and secure, but since only the session key is encrypted, the encryption and decryption process is still very fast. The data encrypted with the session key and the session key encrypted with the recipient's public key is then packaged together to make a complete PGP message. Encryption with PGP takes care of the part of data security known as confidentiality, which is restricting the number of people who can see the data. Sometimes, confidentiality is not necessarily what we need. Two other areas of data security that PGP takes care of for us are integrity and authenticity. Integrity is ensuring that the data has not been modified in the process of transmission. Authenticity is ensuring that the data originated from where it claims to have originated from. Digital signatures provide both integrity and authenticity verification for our data. Digitally signing data is a simple process involving two steps, signing and verification. First, the data is hashed. 
that is, converted to an essentially unique bit pattern of specified length. Changing even one bit in the sample of data will produce a hash that is completely different from the original. The hash verifies the integrity of the data, but it is not yet secure, and it does nothing to verify authenticity. Therefore, PGP encrypts the hash with your private key. At this point, the data has been signed. The verification process is simple. When the party to whom you transmit the data receives the encrypted hash, they attempt to decrypt the hash with your public key. If the resulting hash matches the hash of the data, the data assuredly came from you and has not been modified. Now that we understand a little bit about how PGP works, we can go to the computer and actually start trying out GPG. Most Linux distributions already come with GPG installed, so chances are you won't need to do this step. However, if your distribution does not have GPG in it already, it's a very easy program to download and install. Simply go to Google and type in GPG into the search bar. And um, the GPG website will be the first result. Then you're going to scroll down to the download section. And then scroll down to uh, right about here where it says the uh, source compressed using bzip2. And then just click this to download. And we're going to want to save to disk. And we're going to save it in the uh, user slash um, src directory. And we're going to create a new directory. Call it. Uh, GNU PG-1.4.9. I'm just going to save that tarball there. Okay, so now we can go to the terminal. And change the directory to slash user slash src slash GNU PG-1.4.9. And there's our tarball. And we're going to use the tar command hyphen xjf wildcard to um, untar this. And we're going to change to the directory that's just been created. And now the build process is very simple. I'm just going to run configure. There are some library dependencies for GPG, but chances are you have them already, or can easily download them from your distribution's package repository. Now we simply run make which will run very fast thanks to the magic of cinema. I like to think this is what it must be like to build things on BlueGene.